this video we will be looking at word problems um, where we are dividing decimals by whole numbers. If you need computation practice, there is a companion assignment dealing just with computation. Um, the computation on this will be relatively simple. We'll also be looking at some models. Um, if you're looking for specific TEKS, we will be on 5.3G and 5.3F. They'll sort of be integrated together. All right, so on this first problem, on number one, a rope was 14 and 35 hundredths inches long. Cat cut the rope into seven pieces of equal length. What is the length of each piece of rope in inches? So our question statement here, we're looking for the length of the individual pieces of rope. Now if we see the word cut, we need to be thinking dividing. Because if we're cutting something into equal pieces, then then that's basically that's basically us just dividing it up. So our original rope was 14 and 35 hundredths inches long. And we're going to cut it into seven equal pieces. So that's what we're dividing by. So when I set this problem up, this is how I'm going to set it up. All right, I've got my my starting value, my starting amount for the rope, and then how many pieces I'm going to cut it into. All right, and then it's just a matter of completing the computation. So 7 goes into 14 twice. 2 times 7 is 14. Get no remainder. Now this is confusing a lot of people. Um, I'm not really sure why. I don't know if it's just the decimal being there or not. A lot of times what I will, what I will do, and I didn't do it on this one, kind of jumped right in, is before I even start, I'll just move the decimal straight up. Just draw my arrow and move the decimal up. And then I'm just going to kind of forget about the decimal. I'm going to complete the computation just like if this was a, a normal division problem. So if this were a normal division problem, um, I'd bring down the 3, and then 7 won't go into 3. So I've got to put a 0 here, just like I would in a, in a normal division problem. All right. Since I put the zero down, I don't need to go through the steps of multiplying zero times seven because it's just kind of a waste of time and space. So I can just bring the five down, and then seven goes into thirty-five five times. Five times seven is thirty-five, and I get no remainder. So my answer is two and five hundredths inches. All right. Number two. It's pretty straightforward. It's just asking us what's the quotient. So if I've got quotient, I know I'm dividing. When 75 hundredths is divided by 5. Well, if I didn't know I was dividing before, I sure know now. Now, the problem comes a lot of times when we set this up because I've got two numbers here and I've got to set it up. Now, on star, we're going to get an answer choice almost always if I set it up incorrectly. It's going to give me that as a wrong answer choice, kind of our trick answer. So I've got to make sure I get I get this set up correctly. All right, and here's the key. If I look at what it's divided by, if I'm dividing by something, that's going to be on the outside. So this is always what I'm dividing by. If I'm looking at it in the form of a fraction, this would always be my denominator. And so my 75 hundredths, that's what I'm actually dividing. And I chose to put the zero in here. You don't technically have to, but, but really just to help you remember about the decimal, it's not a bad idea to put the zero in. Now this time I'm going to go ahead and put that guy right up top. And then I don't have to worry about my decimal again. All right, five won't go into zero, so I'm not going to worry about anything right there. I mean, I guess I could put a zero there. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, five goes into seven one time. One times five is five. Pull down my 5, 5 goes into 25, 5 times, and I get no remainder. And so I get 15 hundredths as my answer. So number 3, we're dealing with a model. And division models are actually pretty easy to work with. There's really just two things we need to look at. So I've got, here's my... Here's my actual um, expression, 1.2 divided by 3, 
And so I need, to, I need to think about what that means. So just like up here when we were looking at dividing by 5, here we're dividing by 3, right? Because if I read this out loud, I would say which model represents 1 and 2 tenths divided by 3. So this is what I'm dividing by. That's what I'm dividing by, and that's what I'm dividing. So if I've got a model like this, I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, and I would always do this as a check to actually do the computation on this. That's not going to hurt anything at all. So, again, I'm going to put my decimal up. That way I don't have to worry about it at the end. 3 will not go into 1. 3 goes into 12 four times. I get no remainder. So my answer is going to be 4 tenths. Well, that, that will help me as I'm trying to figure out which model goes with which. So let's start with the dividing by. So I'm going to divide by 3. So whatever model I'm using has got to be cut into three pieces. All right? So A, it looks like I've kind of got three holes here, but it looks like this little, this little box, this is what I'm dividing by. Well, that's not... That's just one box. That's not dividing by three, so that's not going to work. This one's got two boxes. That's not going to work. C's got three boxes, so maybe. And then D has three boxes, so maybe on that one as well. So if I just look at what I'm dividing by, I've already eliminated half the answer choices. So now I'm just left with C and D. So divided by three. Three boxes, one, two, three. Three boxes, one, two, three. So it could be either of those. Now I need to look at what I'm dividing. So I'm starting out with 1 and 2 tenths. So the large box here, that would be 1. And this would be 2 tenths. So that's 1 and 2 tenths. But then I've got here 1 and 2 tenths. And here 1 and 2 tenths. And here 1 and 2 tenths. Hmm. Now there's a couple of things here. One, I may be able to look at this, at this and say, you know what, C is my correct answer because I'm starting out with 1 and 2 tenths and then I'm dividing it into three equal pieces. This is the tricky, confusing answer because what I've actually got here is I don't have 1 and 2 tenths divided by 3. I've actually got 1, 2, 3, and then 2 tenths, 4 tenths, 6 tenths, so I've really got 3 and 6 tenths divided by 3 for answer choice D. And I'm getting 1 and 2 tenths as an answer. And that's where your answer, your computation answer, can really help you because my computation answer is 4 tenths. Well, if I look in here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths. So C is my correct answer. And your explanation is just what we just talked about. I'd like you to write that in your own words. All right, let's look at number four. So number four is a money problem. Most of the time on money problems, they're going to help you out with the picture. All right? And this one is not an exception because if you look at the picture, we've got one, two, three, four dollars. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cents. So it's giving us some picture model. Let's see what they're actually asking us to do. Use the money to below to determine how much one bag of chips costs. Now, this is a little weird because my question statement is right in the middle of the problem. Most of the time it's at the end, but in this case it's right in the middle. All right? If two bags of potato chips cost four dollars and sixty eight cents so what I'm looking at here I'm looking at how much two bags costs I want to know how much one bag costs so I need to divide this number by two now I can do the computation on this and if you are one of my students you sure better I could absolutely do the computation on this and it's divided by two so it should be pretty quick two goes into four well, actually, let's do our decimal first. Move our decimal up. Then we don't have to worry about it at the end. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 times 2 is 4. Pull down the 6. 2 goes into 6 three times. 3 times 2 is 6. Pull 
pull down the 8. 2 goes into 8 4 times. And I get no remainder. So that works. The other thing I can do, though, since it's given me this model, since I'm dividing by 2, I'm just dividing it in half. So if I draw a line right through the middle of my model, I've just separated it into two equal pieces. Well, I've got 1, 2, two dollars here, 10, 20, 30, 30 cents here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 cents here. So that's going to give me two dollars and thirty-four cents, which is what my computation gave me. So use those models when they give them to you, but also do the computation. Do the computation as well, because if you get the same answer on both, you probably did it correctly. All right, number five. Now number five is a little bit tricky. We're going to have to read this one pretty carefully. Daylin ran the same distance every day for four weeks. So she's running, talking about distance, every day for four weeks. She ran a total of 72.8 miles. Write, now this, here we go, write and solve an equation that can help you find the number of miles that Daylin ran each day. All right, so I've got to write an equation here, and then I've got to solve that equation. All right, so I'm going to use I'm going to use m as my variable, and it it does not matter what you use. You can use y, you can use a, you can use q. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to use m just for miles because I'm trying to calculate the miles that she ran every day for four weeks. All right, she ran a total of 72.8, 72 and 8 tenths miles. So I know I've got to have the 72 and 8 tenths miles in there because that's my total. But I want to know how much she ran each day. Well, if I want to know how much she ran each day, I'm going to have to divide this number. The question is, what am I going to divide it by? Now, if you're in a hurry, you might just set it up like this and move along. Here's the problem with that. Four weeks. It's asking me for each day. So I need the total number of days. Well, I don't have the total number of days. I just have the number of weeks. But it does tell me that she ran every day for those four weeks. Well, if there's seven days in a week, then that's how I'm going to figure out how many days she ran. All right, so here's my weeks. This is days per week. And this is total miles. All right, so there is my equation, and now I need to solve it. So order of operations says I need to do what, or what's in the parentheses first. So four times seven is twenty-eight. Once I've completed all the operations in the parentheses, I don't need it anymore. And then I need to do my division off to the side. Now, I'm going to have to estimate a little bit here. 28 is pretty close to 30. I can round that up to 30. 30 is going to go into 72 uh, probably twice. Three times would be too much. Three, three times 30 would be 90. That would be too much. And two times 30 would be 60. So that's probably pretty good. So let's try that. So let's do 28 times 2 off to the side here. 2 times 8 is 16. Carry my 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Do my subtraction. Got to regroup here. 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. And then I get 168. So now I've got to figure out how many times is 20 going to go into 168. Um, hmm. Let's see. If I'm doing 30, because 28 is pretty close to 30, so I'm rounding it to 30. Is it just as I kind of think through this? So if I count it up, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, it's got to be in between these two. So this is times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6. Now, I don't think I'm going to have a remainder. Most of these problems, you shouldn't get a remainder. If you do, then you've probably made a computation error. So I probably need to go high instead of low. 
So let's try 28 times 6. And if we need to go back and change it, we can. We'll do it off the side. Since I'm writing in pen, um, I'll do it off the side, and I won't put it up there until I know for sure. So 28 times 6. So 8 times 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. And there she is. So, oop, you know what I forgot? I forgot to do my decimal at the beginning. So 6 times 28 will give me 168 and I'll have no remainder. So my answer is m is going to equal 2.6 miles. If I really want to get special, I could put per day, because that's what the question's asking me. And there's my answer. And here's my equation. All right, on to number six. Number six is another model, but this time we've got to write and solve an equation that goes with the model. Now the good news is I don't have to count those little boxes because it tells me the value in the problem. So here we go. The model is shaded to represent three and sixty hundredths. So that would be three and sixty hundredths. This model represents an equation. Ooh, ooh, here we go. Write and solve, so I've got two things I have to do here, an equation that represents the model. All right, so I know how much um, the shaded area is. So I know my, my total value. That's what this 3 and 60 hundredths is. That's my total. Now I need to know, what am I dividing by? I'm dividing by what? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes. So that is going to be what I'm going to be dividing by. It's going to be dividing by 4. So I know I'm going to be dividing by 4. And I know my total. Um, again, it doesn't matter what I pick as a variable. Um, I'm just going to do... I don't know. Let's just do... How about S? No, that's too close to five. Let's do M again. Because we got model over here, I'll just use the M for model. So M is going to equal my total, which is 3 and 60 hundredths, divided by 4. There's my divided by 4. All right, and then I'm just going to solve for it. Um, do the computation here over to the side. All right, so 4 won't go, actually, let's do our decimal first. 4 won't go into 3, put a 0 there. 4 will go into 36. Hmm, how many times? 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. And I'm going to get that. Now, I don't actually need to put that last 0 there, but I'm going to just because I want to get in the habit of completing, completing that computation. And I don't really even need this to be 3 and 60 hundredths. I could have done 3 and 6 tenths and it would have been fine. But here's, here's why it's not a bad idea. Since the boxes are in hundredths, each one of these individual boxes represents one one hundredth, I can count the boxes inside here to make sure that I've gotten the correct answer. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so there's ten rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns. So that would be nine times ten, which would be ninety. So there's ninety little shaded boxes in each of these. So that's what I've got here is ninety hundredths. And I'm going to leave it like this. Um, but I mean, if you if you write it m equals nine tenths, that's okay too. All right, on to number seven. 24 students in Mrs. Galloway's art class decorated a banner to go on the cafeteria wall. All right, so we got 24 students and some kind of a banner. The banner, there's a banner again, measured 88 feet long. And each student painted an equal section of the banner. Write and solve an equation. Oh, I'm writing and solving an equation again. Write and solve an equation that represents the length of the section that each student painted. All right, so I've got a banner. 
that they painted. And the total length of the banner is 88.8 .8 feet. And every student painted their own little individual section. And there were 24 students. So I'm going to divide that into 24 sections because there were 24 students. So my equation, we'll use, uh, we'll use B for banner. Is B is going to equal 88 and 8 tenths feet divided by 24. And there's my equation. And it's not a bad idea to draw a picture on these sometimes, just to kind of help your brain think about what's actually happening in the problem. All right, let's do the computation so I can get an answer. 88.8 .8 divided by 24. Um, 24, if, if you played, if you've, and most of you guys probably haven't ever gone to the, an arcade, but if you know how to count by 25s, because if you've dealt with quarters, um, if you can count by 25s, you really don't even have to estimate too much here, because 24 is one away from 25. So I know by multiples of 25, because I used to play in the arcade all the time, we got 25, 50, 75, um, we won't really have to go higher than that, I guess I can, 100. So here's, this is if, um, that's 25 times 1, that's times 2, times 3, times 4. So 88, pretty close to 75. So let's try 3. Let's, just do, let's do it over here. 24 times 3. 3 times 4 is 12, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So we get 72. Look at that, don't you have to regroup. 8 minus 2 is 6, 8 minus 7 is 1. Pull down my 8. All right, I'm going to have to go a little bit higher on my, my estimation here. So 125, let's be if it was times 5, 150 if it was times 6, 175 if it was times 7. Hmm, all right, well, I think since 24 is a little bit less than 25, I don't want to go low. It's got to be in between these two. I don't want to go low, so I don't think I'm going to go with 150. I think I'm going to go with 175, or times 7, and just see what I get. So let's do 24 times 7. I'm not going to write it yet, because I don't want to, I don't want to make a mistake in pen. 8 times 4, excuse me, 7 times 4 is uh, 28. Carry the 2. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16. So there we go. Now, I did it again. I've been telling you guys the entire video to do your decimal at the beginning, and I keep forgetting to do mine at the beginning. So, my answer is going to be B is going to equal 3 and 7 tenths feet. All right, last problem, number 8. Chris wants to buy a new video game. Now, spending some money that costs fifty dollars and forty cents. He plans to save a portion of his allowance each week for twelve weeks. How much will Chris need to save each week in order to have enough to purchase the video game? So I know he wants to buy this game cost fifty dollars and forty cents. I don't have to write an equation this time. It's just asking me for an answer. So um, I know he's got fifty dollars and forty cents he needs to spend, but he wants to save money every week for it for twelve weeks. So I'm gonna divide it by twelve and that should give me how much he needs to save each week. Um, let's see here. I don't have a good number to estimate with. I guess I, I can just do my multiples of 12. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 9, 10. I can go higher if I need to, but I shouldn't need to. should never need to go higher than 10 when you're dividing. Um, if you do, then you probably made a computation error somewhere. All right, so 
Five, no. Fifty, yes. Looks like four. Four times twelve is forty-eight. Regroup. Ten minus eight is two. Four minus four is nothing. Pull down my four here. Twenty-four, or twelve going to twenty-four twice. I did it again. I didn't put my decimal up again. Now, because we're dealing with money, we need to put this zero here. Um, if it was just a decimal, I'd say don't worry about it. But since we're dealing in money, we're not going to say, I need to save $4.02 this week. We're not going to say that. We're going to say, I need to save $4.20 this week. So when you're dealing with money, you really want to go to the hundreds place. You actually don't want to go beyond the, the hundreds place because then you're dealing with you know, part of a penny, which is kind of ridiculous. So, um, But I do want to go to the hundreds place when I'm dealing with money.